The laptop you use today probably weighs around 1.5 kg and can easily fit in your backpacks. But do you know, the first laptop weighed as much as a small child and costed more than some cars. Let's explore how these amazing devices went from bulky boxes to smart and slim powerful machines we cannot live without today. Every great invention starts with someone's dream. For laptops, the dreamer was Alan Kay. Back in 1968, when the computers filled the entire rooms, Kay imagined something different. A portable computer called a Dynabo, which would be light enough for kids to carry. He wanted it to weigh less than 1 kg. In April 1981, a man named Adam Osborne changed the entire computing game forever when he created the Osborne One, the first laptop that people could actually buy. But let's be honest, it weighed around 11 kgs and the screen just 5 inches across. Also, it need to be plugged in every time you use it. So, what's the point of being portable? But every journey starts with the first step. And Osborne 1 was that first step. If the Osborne 1 was the version 1.0 of the laptop computing, the grid compass was the version 2.0, a huge leap forward. In the early 1980s, Bill Morridge created a design so advanced that only NASA astronauts and military people got to use it. What made it so special was not only its technology but also its design. It was a design where the screen folds over the keyboard, protecting both the keyboard and the screen. It was called the clamshell design. The 1980s became a time for rapid change for laptops, where every company was in the race to be the first to add new features. The Radio Shack brought us the TRS-80 Model 100 with an LCD display. Commodore made waves with the first portable laptop with the colored screens. It still weighed around 9 kilos, but the colors were worth it. The Gavin and SE gave the term laptops, which we still use today. IBM joined the race, giving their PC convertibles, which weighed around 4 kilos. In 1988, the Compact SLT 286 bought much better graphics with its VGA display. It also had something revolutionary, an internal hard drive. Even more important was the 1989 NEC Ultralight, which is the great-grandfather of today's slim notebooks. Even the best companies can sometimes get it wrong. In 1989, Apple released its first portable laptop, the Mac Portable. It was a big flop, very heavy, very expensive, and needed to be plugged in most of the time. But Apple learned from its mistake and in 1991, Apple released the PowerBook. It was smarter and easy for people to use. As we entered the 2000s, something big happened. The sales of the laptop overtook the desktop computers. People started to prefer laptops because of their portability. The company started to build different kinds of laptops for different needs. Today's laptops would amaze those early computer pioneers. They're powerful enough to edit videos, thin enough to slip into laptops, and common enough to find in homes, coffee shops, and even classrooms. From Alan Kay's dream of Dynabook to today's ultra-thin laptops, the journey has been flabbergasting. This journey is not just about technology. It's about our desire to take our creativity wherever we go. So, if you like this video, please comment down below. Don't forget to like and share it with your friends. Thank you.